watch my game against the legend, the grandmaster, Daniel Naroditsky. Hello everyone and welcome back! So today I will show you one of my games against the legend, the famous player from the United States of America, the YouTuber, the Twitch channel, of course one of the best commentator of the world, Daniel Naroditsky and I must admit I played with this guy 16 times in my life and the score is 12 and a half for him against three and a half for me so he's just crushing me killing me and you know what he's just a better player so this game was played one and a half years ago in the title tuesday tournament so i played with the white pieces and i really want to recommend you guys look closely this game because it really can help you to understand how can you develop your pieces improve them to their best shape and position during the game so the game started with e4 of course as i'm playing all the time d6 d4 knight f6 knight to c3 and now we play the move knight to c6 while of course e5 is an option with philidor knight f3 knight bd7 bishop c4 and just castling a3 rook e1 and you know just a game philidor this is the name of the opening of course instead of knight c6 there is another move g6 and this is the pierce uh, defense so i played this opening with the black pieces uh, in my childhood and it's really really great opening to play with the black pieces i must admit also magnus carlsen like to do it so knight c6 a little bit strange the point is that after d5 the knight will come back to b8 with c6 and you know trying to attack the center pawns um, the white center pawns so g6 bishop g7 also this diagonal will be open for the bishop so it's a little bit makes sense for black to play the move knight c6 and after d5 coming back so i play the move knight to f3 g6 and now bishop to b5 maybe my threat is to play d5 as you can see black has an option to play bishop g7 d5 a6 because now after d takes c6 just a takes b5 and black is really doing great but i will play the move bishop a4 because this knight is pinned b5 knight takes a takes bishop takes and now black has a very interesting option just to go castle bishop takes c6 and bishop a6 sacrificing the exchange after bishop eight a8 queen takes a8 and here i'm not sure about white position because okay we are up an exchange and two pawns right but our king cannot have the possibility to castle yet and also e6 rook e8 the attack is coming so i'm not sure also can you see the two bishops will attack here very very strong and yeah it's very interesting a position to analyze but he played the move a6 here i took it b takes c6 and now i play the move h3 the point is that i really want uh, to disturb this bishop on c8 because here bishop e6 it's not a move bishop d7 it's not a move bishop b7 maybe but c5 should be um, the next move maybe for black to open this diagonal for the bishop and also one option is to play the move a5 with bishop a6 but also after a5 I will play the move castle, bishop a6 just rook e1 and this bishop maybe looks nice but it's really empty diagonal right? So the bishop, the white color bishop for, for black is not feeling well. So I just played the move h3, I didn't want uh, to let him to play the move bishop g4. He played the move bishop g7, just castling, castle and now rook e1. As you can see already my two knights are developed. I'm bringing the rook also to e1 maybe to prepare some e5 and also I'm not forgetting about this bishop and this rook and this queen that should have worked for, for them, right? So rook e1 was played, he played the move knight to d7. His point was, I think, to play the move c5 with bishop b7 and to play with these two bishops and it's, it seems great. I played the move bishop to e3. I think also bishop g5 looks very nice. And also bishop f4 maybe. Um, 
Yeah, but also bishop e3, of course, makes sense. e5 was played by my opponent, Daniel Nordicki. So here I played him with queen d2 because I really wanted uh, to develop my queen and to improve her position and also to connect between the rooks. The next move probably will be rook a d1 and also the rook will do a great job in this d file. Another option was just to take it. Knight takes, of course, knight takes, bishop takes, and now maybe queen d2 with bishop d4, rook d1, maybe f4, maybe bishop h6. Looks nice, but I promise that this position will, will be very close to the game. So I played the move queen d2, rook e8, and now just bringing the next rook to the game. All my pieces are in the game, right? Already developed and doing something this knight looks good, these two rooks in these files, and the bishop and the queen here. What is it? Yeah, great. And the bishop in, with, with the queen uh, in the very interesting and important diagonal, right? Bishop h6 maybe, maybe bishop d4 in some ways. So it looks nice. He played the move rook b8, of course. The b2 pawn is under attack. We are playing the move b3. And now bishop b7. I took the pawn, knight takes, knight takes. I'm not sure about knight takes, maybe I have some option to play the move knight to h2. With some plan to play f4, knight d7 and f5, knight g4, bishop h6, it really looks nice. Let's see for example c5, I think just bishop h6, and the point that after bishop h8, just f4, Knight c6, knight g4, with bishop g5, knight h6, f5, knight d5, looks really promising for white, I must say. So I took the knight on e5, bishop takes, and now I play the move bishop to d4. Unfortunately, after bishop takes, queen takes, and c5, I'm not sure that my position is really better. Just queen d3 was played queen f6, maybe queen d2 was a little bit better, because after queen f6, I have some option to play f4, but don't forget, yeah, the pawn on e4 will be weak after rook e6, rook b8, yeah, I will suffer with this pawn on e4, so maybe instead of f4 I will play the move f3. But yeah, so queen d3 also makes sense, queen f6, rook e3, just improving another rook, maybe also, um, you know, prepare rook d e1 and to defend the pawn on e4. So rook e5 was played, rook d1, rook b8, you can see that we, we played very very fast until now, I played the move a4, h5 and now just knight d5 with you know the point that after queen d8 it's really really tempting for white to play f4 rook e to c rook 5 sorry to e6 and now something around c4 maybe c4 with f5 and this is looks really nice because this king on g8 um, looks a little bit weak after f5 maybe i can open it right so after knight d5 he played the best move here bishop takes d5 e takes d5 and a5 and now just i take the rook on e5 rook takes rook takes queen takes and now i play the move queen to d2 with the point that i really want to take this pawn the a5 pawn and running run 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 but black played the move h4 i took the pawn and now daniel narodicki with one minute and a half against two minutes and 12 seconds for me, he played queen a1 check, king h2 and queen e5 check, and this of course just three time repetition and it's a draw. Of course, after here, if I'm you know trying to play the move g3, I'm not sure about it. H takes, f takes, and queen e2 check, and king g1 and just queen d1 check, and take this pawn with check, and this pawn and this pawn. So, yeah, it looks like I'm just losing. So, of course. The draw um, came and I drew against one of the best and famous players in the world, Daniel Narodinsky. So if you like this video, just hit the like button and also subscribe my channel. See you soon in the next video. Bye bye.